Yo, it's Whispers. Shout out Mob D Block. You already know what it is. Shout out to my brother Mikey T, the movie star. I want to welcome one of D Block's dopest affiliates to the channel. Whispers, man, I appreciate the chance to have you on the show and to get your story today. No doubt. Thank you, man. I'm hype. I'm hype with Mikey T on this motherfucker. So, so love, man. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. You know, I want to get into your story. You said you were from the Soundview section of the Bronx. You know, yes. Yes. the Soundview section of the Bronx is very legendary. You know, it's a very legendary part of the Bronx. And it's the home of a lot of gang violence, man. It's the home of sex, money, murder. It's the home of a lot of vicious street gangs. Not just Bloods. There's everyone in Soundview. So I want to know what it was like growing up in Soundview and what era you were out there. Well, um, I would say this too. The Soundview area is also responsible for hip-hop as well. A lot of legendary basketball players. You get, I just wanted to add that on there. You get what I'm saying? Um, and as far as like the gang shit, the gang shit, the gang shit. But as far as sex, money, murder, it was like money boss players. Them niggas to get money way before that gang shit was even on it. So, you know, just to add a little clarification on it. But my era was more like 92 when I got there. When I, when I, got, when I got there, like I'm not from San Luis Projects. I'm from Bronxdale Projects. Rest in peace, Disco King Mario. You know what I'm saying? That's the legend. They gave him a block. He's one of the first people that really started this hip-hop shit. No bullshit. Pure facts. Soundview's a couple of blocks up from me. I'm on Rose Across the Street. But growing up there, this shit was dangerous, bro. Like, it's a compacted area with mad projects. You got Castle Hill. You got Monroe. You got Soundview. You got Bronxville. Then you got Bronx River. And at the same time, you got to think, in the summertime, see, summer's different now. But in the summertime back then, like, niggas used to have basketball tournaments everywhere. You get what I'm saying? And then you had your project day. So niggas would go over there just to start trouble. You get what I'm saying? Play ball niggas over there, ball in the tournament, shooting shit up and all that. So it, it was nuts. But at the same time, what I can say is you find comfort and mayhem sometimes. You get what I mean? I always love my hood. I, I, I love the older people in there. You know, the, the projects is the projects, but you got good people that live inside these situations. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's not a savage and shit like that. So my upbringing was pretty cool. It was dangerous, but... The people I was around protected the people that they loved in the community. So I didn't have to really worry about that. Like the gangsters kept that shit with the gangsters. You get what I mean? Now, as far as the blood shit and all that, that shit was a little bit younger. Niggas was wilding, you know, cutting niggas, doing all types of dumb shit. But me, I was more so into my sports vibe. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just wanted to go to the league. It was all ball for me. And when, like I said, with ball in the big park right there in Rosedale Park, we had the Pathmark tournament, so you had Posse playing. You had Future out there, Master Rob, fucking uh, Mo Butter Black. You had so many basketball legends from everywhere that used to be out there. So that was more influencing to me. You get what I'm saying? Like, that's what I wanted to do. But yeah, the area was dangerous. When you're a kid, you don't realize that shit. What kind of music was out? You know, when you were riding around, who did you come up listening to and who inspired you? I listened to Mob D, Pun, Nas. Everything. See, as as a youngin, I always loved music, so I would rap the rhymes and shit. Like, yo, this shit is fire. Ooh, what he's saying is crazy. And I'm asking my older brothers because back then everybody had a CD collection, so there was CDs everywhere. I mean, him and my cousin had CDs everywhere. So anything I wanted to listen to, or I inquired a question, or like I wanted some information, yo, pick the album up, go listen to that. So I was listening to uh, Boot Camp Click, uh. Fuji's. I mean, basically the '90s period. Before that, it was Slick Rick, Big Daddy King, um, Rock Kim, Kumo D, Run DMC, um, shit, Dougie Fresh. It was like all that, just everything, man. Like I grew up on pure New York hip hop. And when did you decide to make the transition and do music? Like, and tell everybody what was your first mixtape and your introduction into the game. My transition into music came from um. So I used to play ball a lot, but. I had like a little troubled childhood and shit. I was getting in trouble doing a lot of dumb shit. So I had to go to Virginia. When I went to Virginia, the school system in Virginia is way different from New York. So they was trying to leave me back and all this other shit. And you know, if you're from New York, like it was always a thing like, yo, bro, you getting left back, you an idiot. Niggas laughing at you, niggas scared to be in the same class. You know what I mean? So I just couldn't dig that. So I wanted to go to night school. I got to a certain level, but they jerked me because I wasn't enrolled in their school system. So I said, yo, fuck this, bro. I'm going to just stick to the rapping. But at that time, I was still balling. You know what I mean? So I was trying to attend a school because I was still in high school so I could at least play ball, whatever. But that shit was like 
it was a dead dream, bro. So I just got on my rapping crazy. And my first mixtape was Buzz Mobile with Lonnie B. Shout out to Lonnie B, the heavy hit out in VA. That's my brother, love him to death. He helped me out a lot in the beginning. So I really started a lot of rap shit in Richmond. Like on the radio battling Zulu. I, 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 like, I don't know if, well, back in the days, Cassidy used to battle on some shit called The Cypher. You know what I mean? And his name was Bull B at the time. But they wound up moving to Richmond, and I wound up winning a couple of championships on that. So that's how I started to get my name up. Then I got with Lonnie B. So my first tape was Buzz Mode. But I was young. I was just born and shit. And I was in Richmond. But there's a transition to when I came back home to New York, and that's when shit get different. Yeah, my introduction to your music was through Styles P. You know, Styles P said your name, and he said that you were nice. So if Styles P is saying that you're nice, then it's like, who's whispers? Because... I like Styles P, and if Styles P thinks you're nice, then I got to go and listen to Whispers myself. Mm -hmm. Correct. Correct. That's, that's the, that, I mean, that's the God, man. You get what I'm saying? So it's like, I mean, what better cosign is that? But at the same time, see, people want to cosign, but it's like, yo, listen, I love my cosigns. I love my brothers. I love my OGs. But me, I'm the type of person, go ahead and cosign me. I'm going to make a motherfucker be like, yo, you was not lying, bro. You get what I'm saying? So I stay on my work. I stay pushing and pushing because that shit means so much to me because he's done so much in his game that I'm still trying to accomplish. So for him to say that, I got to upkeep that. Also within myself as well and just know that I'm that dude when it comes to this shit, especially if Styles going to say it. You get what I'm saying? Tell me, how did you get down with D-Block and Styles P in the first place? That whole situation came about when I was making music with Chris Rivers. Shout out to Chris Rivers. I don't know if you know who that is. That's that's punch son. Probably do whatever. Um, I was doing a lot of mixtapes with Chris Rivers and um we was making music on our own, just doing what we doing. And uh one is like P, like one of Styles managers or whatever that was working with him wanted to come to the studio to check out some music with Chris and you know what we was doing. And he wound up listening and he liked it, but he didn't know, like it was more so for Chris, but he didn't know I was really rocking with Chris. So you heard both of us, it's like y'all fuck what they doing, they're a good match. So, boom, he wanted to bring us to D-Block. He introduced us to Styles. Styles is like, you know, real. Styles is a cool, real upfront kind of dude. Like, he's not a bullshitter. He ain't going to play with you. It is what it is, bro. You know what I'm saying? You can feel his energy out the gate. And depending on what day you catch him, he might be super lovey. I'm not saying he's an angry motherfucker, but it's just his style is real calm and mellow. You know what I mean? So, when, when he approached us, he was like, all right, so let me hear something. Chris went first. I went second. He was like, yeah, them niggas nice. They're going to make me rewrite my shit. And I always remember that. And then from there, it was just sitting around and waiting for the opportunity. Like, yo, you ready? And I'm like, hell yeah, I'm ready. And then from that day when they gave me my first shot, like, it's like when you're sitting on the bench, like, yo, please sub me in. I'm about to fuck this game up. And once they sub me in, I ain't stopped since, bro. So take me back into, like, the time period of that. Um, how long now have you been working with D-Block? And what year was that initial meeting? That shit was like 10 years, bro. I'm bad with math and numbers, but I've been with them for about 10 years in a sense. And D-Block is my family for sure. Like, I got so many records with them. You get what I'm saying? I've been on multiple tours. I'm still touring with them, still doing what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? So that's just that's just home team. That's family. Like, period. You get what I mean? That's just home team, period. So I could say like 10 years, man. Who were the artists that were working with D-Block at that time? The artists that were working with D-Block at that time? Well, I mean, they're still working with D-Block. I mean, you had Dice Payne. There's a whole different type of D-Block, though. This is not the D-Block with, like, you know, the old no security shit. Like, I came, like, right after that. You know what I'm saying? But um, it was really, like, Dice Payne, me. Um, let me not get this wrong. You know, Sniper's still here. Shout out to Sniper. It's my brother. I love Sniper. You already know it. Sniper always did. Um, to me, that's really it, bro. Like, it, was, it wasn't much. You get what I'm saying? It wasn't really much. You got to understand, D-Block is D-Block, then you got So Raspy, too. You get what I'm saying? So Raspy, that's Nino Man, that's Millie's, that's them. I'm not saying, like, you know, beef and nothing. It's all family, but there's, there's three different kings in this. You got Styles, you got Sheik, you know what I'm saying? D-Block is the union, but it's, it's just different shit. So, to me, it was just, oh, Moxburg. Can't forget my nigga Moxburg. Sorry, fuck out of here. The God, Moxburg, my guy. Yes, Mox, me, Dice, tonight. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it as far as to my knowledge. You know what I'm saying? If I'm forgetting anybody, forgive me, but that's what I remember offhand. And those are the people I still work with to this day. Yeah, definitely salute a lot of those guys. You know, Snipe Life, that's the homie. Mox Lotto, you know what I mean? Oh, 
that's you locks. Those my guys, man. My brothers, man. Bro. You know, so whispers. You know, Snipe Life has his own thing outside of D Block. Do you consider yourself a D Block artist, or do you have your own imprint under them as well? Well, D Block is my family. Um, it's different. Like certain things I can't really speak about because you don't speak about family things. You get what I'm saying? So. Just the way my the, the the way I was embraced and the way I was like loved and like yo, let me see what you got type of shit. That's always my family because they like when I got to that stage, it just it catapulted me, bro, to be like always stay the best that you can. You know what I'm saying? So it's not really like I'm signed to them. I'm not signed to them. That's just family. That's love. Always, no matter what. Like I just I just did a song the other day and sent it to Luch. Luch sent the verse back. The verse the next day, bro. I was surprised. Like God damn, Luch, that was fast. You're like, come on, wish we family. You get what I'm saying? So that's how it is. As far as my shit, I got Shadow Mob. You know what I mean? And that's just members of a brotherly bond. And that's a couple of my guys that, you know, I came up with and just, you know, from producers to rappers. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, holding the click together is hard as shit. You get what I'm saying? So I'm just, I'm flag running right now. I'm pushing it. And I'm just helping my dudes on the side. So when we're ready, we're going to make it right. What did you think about the D Block and Dipset versus? It was beautiful. It showed um, it showed New York in unison to me. I don't know how everybody else said it. It showed New York in unison. Um, it showed that you can battle without no violence. It can be cool. And it also showed older rappers. Look at all their ages. They're older rappers. They're not young drill rappers. They're not none of that shit. You get what I'm saying? And I get the whole versus thing of it, but it just showed how impactful and then, I mean, look at Killer Mike and the Grammys, bro. All that shit is hopeful because they always put an age on hip hop. And that's the problem because most of the, the legends right now are holding shit down. There's levels, there's fundamentals, there's certain things that cannot be skipped in order to be great. And that's the problem nowadays. So Versus was beautiful. Locks and Dipset both did their thing. Of course, I'm home team. I love both of them. I'm home team, but when you just want to step outside and say who won, yes, the locks won. There was no records being played over. I've been on multiple tours with them, bro. Kiss all of them, they rap, they shit. Literally, there's no music playing behind them except for the beat, bro. You get what I'm saying? And it is what it is. And it just shows you got to stay prepared. No matter how much money you got, bro, no matter how much impact you got and how rich you, blah, blah, blah. When you look at yourself on that camera and you fail, that shit hurt. And I ain't saying no disrespectful way. I'm just saying that's why Jones, not to speak what happened. Jones like, yo, we need another one. No, you can't. It's so. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can't. That shit is history. Yo, bro, that shit was so ill that they got a fucking, they got a clip in the meme. Like, yo, every year we must remind people what Kiss did for New York City, like, or hip hop. That shit is nuts. You get what I'm saying? Plus, that shit also helped me because, of course, they shit went up crazy. So any music I had with them got even more notarized. You get what I'm saying? Because that was bringing a whole new younger market that's watching the verses and watching these older rappers, these legends, shine. That opens a whole new market. I love it. I love it. That shit was beautiful for both parties. Now, if we're talking victory, yes, it was, it was D-Block. So what do you think about the people that say Dipset lost? And who do you even think could have been another group that would, you know, stand up against D-Block? Like, who do you think would have even, even had a chance? At that time in the mixed team, I mean, you know, it was only three groups, bro. D-Block, G-Unit, and Dipset. If you really want to do that, see, that, that versus is for that era. That's how I see it. It was, it was for that era. You get what I'm saying? Because those are the only three motherfucking clicks that was rocking. That was it. So the only other people I could see them battling was G Unit. To me. You get what I'm saying? But I like the dipset matchup. I like it. You get what I'm saying? I don't know. I, I fuck with it. I like the dipset matchup with the locks because G Unit was the shit at the time, but they it was like on some other shit. I think Dipset, well, the G Unit had the streets, but Dipset and D Block just had a different vibe when it came to it. Like, they wasn't the bullies at the time. Dip was fly. D-Block had they shit. It was just, it was all different. You get what I'm saying? Just 50 of them niggas or some other shit. You know what I mean? But I, th I, th I thought it was good, man. Like, I think G-Unit would have been the only other click, to be honest. From New York, in a sense. We don't have a lot of those. How do you feel about the situation where Styles P said Math Hoffa didn't ask him about J-Hood, but Math asked Hood about Styles P and D-Block? How do I feel about that? 
I don't, I can't feel any type of way because that that doesn't really pertain to me. You get what I'm saying? I, I don't have no I you know. I don't really know Jay Hood. I got no bad blood in that man. No none of that shit. You know what I mean? I got no relations and none of that. But just in the saying the conversational space, yeah, that was weird. But I mean, that's respect. Math know he could ask. He, math know who to ask certain questions to. Like, you get what I'm saying? If Math would have asked that, that probably would have fucked the whole interview up, and then it's over. Now you don't have a Styles interview. So I feel like it's a respect thing. You didn't want to do it to Styles. You did it to Jay Hood. It wasn't disrespectful. He probably just don't respect Hood that much. And me just ask him. I don't know. You get what I'm saying? But I feel Styles feel like if you didn't ask me, then don't ask him. You get what I'm saying? Don't leave one opinion out there. Don't do that. That's bias. So that's what it looked like, if I'm correct. Yeah, Styles P stance was like, you didn't give me an opportunity to address, right. address J Hood's status with D Block or what happened with D Block on my expert opinion. But to me, if you would have asked Styles that question, Styles the gentleman, he probably would have answered it. But then he probably could have added him like, you only want to talk about the man. Because Styles, them niggas don't talk about him. Styles got so many business ventures and so much other shit. You get what I'm saying? There's no relations to none of that shit. So why would I talk about a nigga I don't even fucking speak to? Don't even, no disrespect, don't even care. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not giving no light on anything I'm doing. That shit was then. But you ask the nigga that needs the light. No disrespect, I'm just saying it's obvious, bro. Right? So there it go. And then you leave my man no way to speak on nothing. You just let him speak. I'm mean, kind of crazy. You know, so, I mean, it's, it's a respect thing, bro. And it's journalism. You get what I'm saying? So you got to expect certain shit. Everything in the papers ain't real. So niggas got to swerve it. They got to do what they got to do to get their views, man. But I stand behind Styles. Yeah, you know, all respect to Math Hoffa. He probably had 50 That's questions for Styles P. You know what I mean? Where And none of those questions pertain to Jay Hood. But with Jay Hood, he probably right. has 20 questions, 30 questions for him, and two or three, four are about Styles P. Exactly. So what is the interview about? What is it about, Hood? You give it him not I don't even speak on this man because I ain't got no issue with him. But what I'm saying is that interview is about the relationship. And, and he, you get what I'm saying. That, that interview was basically about what went down, but you didn't interview Styles about what went down. So it was biased in a sense. It was fucked up, bro. You know what I mean? To be honest, but hey, it is what it is, man. Fuck it. Like I said, I stand behind my God. I'm on that ghost shit. That's where I'm at. What do you make of J Hood walking away from D Block and acting like he was going to try and sign with 50 Cent during the beef? Niggas had issues at the time, bro. You don't do Bro, that's crazy. How you go with another nigga knowing that this man got beef with the people that literally put you on? Whatever your discrepancies are, you keep that shit behind, bro. Don't speak on that. I'm pretty sure kissing all them niggas arguing all that shit. I never seen it, but none of that shit go public. That nigga got too cocky thinking he could destroy the brand. He thought he got the power that 50 had. He could run. That shit never worked, bro. D Block, that's the streets, my nigga. That's the turf. Literally, you can't you can't damage that. You can't. Niggas keep forgetting them niggas wasn't signed. They didn't have much. They had to hit the mixtapes. That's how they came back. I mean, salute the 50 and them shit too. You get what I'm saying? But, bro, you just don't do that, bro. This principle, my nigga. How the fuck you gonna go out there? How you gonna go chill with the niggas that shot at us? The fuck are you talking about? You're not even allowed here. We gonna kill you if you come out. You just went chill with the niggas. How we know you ain't tell them niggas what we doing? Get the fuck out of here, nigga. You hung yourself. That's it. That's some disloyal shit. Give a fuck. Anything about money, whatever it is, yo, bro, keep that shit off camera. Deal with that shit like that. Get your lawyers, whatever. Do it like that. When you're doing sucker shit like that, bro, you're telling it forever. Can't nobody really fuck with you. Not no real niggas. You emotional nigga. Fuck out of here. That's crazy to me. I would never do that. I'm going to handle my shit off camera. And even when I walk around, I ain't even speaking about them gentlemen. Some niggas like to bury themselves. They'll go to the store and buy their own shovel, bro. That's all. So I don't really speak about her because I know him, but you know it is what it is. But it's a public topic, so I'm just giving my opinion. Yeah, well, we all know what ultimately ended up happening. You know, what do you think of 50 Cent not ending up signing Jay Hood after that? Who the fuck really thought 50 was going to sign him? 
See, yo, Mike, you a smart motherfucker, bro. Because you reach it right now. I see the smirk, bro. I see the smirk. Listen, hood, 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 hood. Where was he going to fit in NG on it? Where? To me, I don't think Hood was better than anybody in G Unit. And I don't know, I don't even want to say this nigga name, but listen, the first time I heard Hood, young boy, how you doing? Yo, he's only done his da. Flavor. Oh, who this? Because I was a young nigga. Oh, this is crazy. I didn't even know Deep Black Lowe. After that, the consistency, it, it, it didn't keep up to me. That's just me personally as an artist. You get what I'm saying? It, like his music didn't keep up with me. He ain't got no classics. Where's his classics? Where the fuck is his classic? He got one classic tape? You tell me. I don't know. I never walked down the block on any block in New York. I heard niggas blasting the hood crazy. Never, my nigga. Ever. Now, I'm not saying he wasn't part of a situation and he helped build it. D-Block, yes, he was a part of that. Was he the strongest one? Hell no. He was just young. And he was going hard at the time, but that nigga wasn't lit like that to me. Ever. So where the fuck was he going to fit in G-Unit? Was his street credibility good enough to even fuck with the unit? Let's think about that. I don't know, bro. I ain't going to get into all that. But I'm just saying. I ain't going to tarnish that man enough. You don't know me. I don't know him. But, you know, being I'm a D-block nigga from what it is public topic, I'm just speaking my opinion, like I said, once again, because you asked me a question. So it is what it is. Let me ask you. Do you have a D block chain? No. I got a shadow mob chain and a Wizzly chain. And if I did have a D block chain, I'll go buy my own fucking chain and it will be real. Well, if you did have a D block chain, would you drag your jewelry on the floor in a disrespectful fashion the way that J Hood did, you know, when he was having a disagreement with them? Hell no, bro. Listen, if I went and bought my own chain, I spent a lot of money on that shit. I'm not dragging nothing on the floor. If I don't fuck with niggas, I'm going to get some type of return for it. I'm not fucking it up. Niggas are idiot. That's how you know it was fake. And at the end of the day, just overall point, you can't tarnish something like that, bro. Them three, them three men are jet, like, bro, them three men are legends, bro. They've been through shit that, like, Changed the course of hip hop too, bro. Like you, the niggas gave you a shot. You know what I'm saying? Crazy, bro. Move on. Move on, bro. Move the fuck on. What is it? 10, 20 years later, move the fuck on, bro. Move on. Them niggas made multiple millions, bro, and they have to mention your name. Move on. I would never drag my chain. Not even this one. Fuck out of here. Nothing. I'm not dragging nothing. How did you feel about when G Unit started to beef with D Block, man? Jada released Checkmate. 50 was on top of Interscope back then and said he was going to delay Styles P's album. Sheik Lutz just went off. Listen, man, I, I wasn't with them at the time. But as a fan, I always loved G Unit and D Block. Always. And to me, I loved it. It was good for the sport, it was good for the, for the, for the fucking culture, bro. It was dope. It just, when 50 came through and was rushing shit, to me, we kind of needed that. They call him the bad guy and the dude that fucked up hip hop. Nah, he wasn't to me. He was as he applied pressure on motherfuckers that was just comfortable. You get what I'm saying? You, like, you, like, it's like being in a school and everybody's all comfy and then that one bully come through. Oh, he's a problem. But he out here knocking motherfuckers out for real. All right, we, we got to start going to gym class. You get what I'm saying? Not saying the locks wasn't on that way, but he was on everybody's ass. So when that happened, it was like, I right, don't pick on the weak niggas here. Pick on some niggas that's going to fight back. So it was all competition. It was beautiful. I loved all the disses, bro. Especially style shit, too. Cheek shit was crazy. All of these shit was fire. It was good, bro. You had to live through that era to understand it and know it. And that's what I miss. No violence. You know what I'm saying? But yes, this is a war of words. We are all... We crash in our words, bro. It's like, it's war. We got a battle. That's all it is. People just put the money in front of everything. So it's like, oh, can't disrespect them. No, no, no. It's a crash. You were technically with, well, you were with D-Block when 50 Cent and them all basically reunited and did the Animal Ambition track, though. Is that yeah, the first time when you started working with D-Block? Yeah, probably around the time I remember 50, I came to D-Block and 50 came Dolo. 
by himself. I wasn't there that day. Or was I? I can't remember. I don't know if I was there that day. I don't think so. But I was there the day before, the day after. Shout out to Days of the Machine, too. Um, I think he told me, like, yo, 50 was up here. And there's even pictures of that. 50's in the studio with them dolo by himself in the chair, sitting down. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, I was around that time. Was Jada style chic? Were they just like, yo, everything's over with 50? It's been some years. Oh, no, nah, I wasn't there for that. And to be honest, those gentlemen don't speak on shit like that. Like, like they don't sit us all at a table and talk about, well, we don't be for 50 no more, guys. So y'all can put your emotions in the bag now. Like, nah, there ain't none of that shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's never spoken to me. I don't even try to ask some information on that. That's none of my business. You know what I'm saying? So it is what it is. All I know, all I know is it was good for hip hop, bro. It was good for hip hop. Did Jadakiss ever introduce you to Millie's? Can you remember that for me? Did Jadakiss introduce you to Millie's? Nah, I was I was always in D Block working at the time, so Millie's came through, and um, of course that's Jada artist, and um, nah, we just like we all like we all just know each other. Like if I'm chilling in the studio with a hundred niggas and we all talking, whatever he working or he's so raspy artist, that's how it was. You know what I'm saying? Jada never really introduced me to Millie's. I just met him while being in D Block. You know what I'm saying? Word, yeah, Millie's is taking off right now. Shout out to So Raspy. Now, yo, Whispers, I want you to tell me five of your songs that my viewers should go listen to right now. Tell me five songs that will turn the viewers into fans. Sunday Service featuring Sheik Looch. Um, hold on, I got to I got a lot. Of, yo, I got a lot of fucking records, bro. What's another joint? Cold sweats, cold sweats. Um, I got a lot of music, Mikey T. Damn, bro. And I got some new shit too. Uh, let me think. 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 What's on Wesley too? Razor Ramon. Um, fuck, bro. It's crazy. Uh, what else? Uh, oh man. First of all, push the line. A Styles P Chic Loose. Don't ever get it fucked up. Go listen to Whispering with Corey Guns being Styles P. Um, I got I got shit on the Locks album too called Footage. That's on the Trinity. Um, I got mad shit, bro. It's crazy, man. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, just check those out. So what are you currently working on? And I want to know what are the name of your projects and everyone. Hold on, let me take that again because I want to say. So what are you currently working on right now? And name off all of your projects so that everybody watching can go and download those and let them know where they can find them. Um, well, my first project I ever did, like Younger, was on Listen Close. That shit was on CDs and all that. You know what I mean? That's when MySpace and all that extra shit and, and um, that piff. You know and I mean, that, that was around that time. But I got those in like physical CDs. I know I probably got it somewhere in a hard drive. I got listen close. I think the next album I did after that was the Red Door. I did the Red Door. Shout out to Superb Official Luxury Music. I got Chic on that with Burning. Um, I got a lot of shit. Uh, the next one was I believe was Wis Monoxide. Wis Monoxide was like eighteen joints. Then I did Wizardly. Then I did Wizardly Two. I was going to drop Wizardly 3, but I'm like, nah, I'm going to chill because I got so much music, plus I've been doing so much other shit. So in between that time, you can find me on Lucy Pack with Corey Guns, um, you know, Militia, uh, Lucy Pack 2, he's going to drop number 3 too, uh, probably on the Militia Project 2 that they plan on dropping. Uh, my next project, I'm going to call it The Spell. You know what I'm saying? It's probably going to be something real quick. But after that, my real shit is going to be Wizardly 3. So what? So, made... Sorry. Uh -huh. I uploaded a single today too. So hopefully the shit get right and all that. And it'll be up probably in a day or two. You know what I'm saying? What's the single that you're uploading? It's called Get Up. So what makes you different from other rappers? You know, what is it about you that's going to make people go and check you out as opposed to the guy from 189th Street? Because I'm whiz. I like I'm 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 whiz and whizzily, man. It's different. If you hear me, you could tell I'm different. And it's the crazy shit, right? People would say, yo, you sound like Jada Kiss. Oh, my God. And one thing, shout out to Infamous Amadeus. That's my guy, too. Anybody with a raspy voice in hip-hop, they always going to compare you to Kiss. That shit is corny to me. You get what I'm saying? Like, 
I love Kiss. Kiss got his own voice. I do what I do. You get what I'm saying? At the end of the day, it's not my fault that my voice can be raspy or whatever it is. You get what I'm saying? But what makes me different is my detail. My detail. You get what I'm saying? Like, think about it as your grandfather that can sit you down, turn the lights low, give you a snack, whatever, and tell you a story. And you can close your eyes and literally see what the fuck he's saying. That's me. I'm that wizardly with it. My detail. My sharpness, my precision, the way I make my music, the way I can make it bounce. I just know how to fuck with emotions. You get what I'm saying? I know how to rock roll chakra, so it's different. I'm just wizardly, bro. That is it. For real, Mikey T, no bullshit, bro. You know what I'm saying? I can sing your grandma off her feet, or I can help your brother do some extra shit. So it's different. You get what I'm saying? I'm just wizardly, bro. That's all it is. All right, man. So. I'm going to give you two suggestions, and I'm going to need you to choose this or that, man. I'm going to give you two two choices, this or that. Let's get into it, Whispers. Big Pun or Fat Joe? Pun. Kennedy Fried Chicken or Crown Fried Chicken? Crown. Brownsville or Far Rockaway? Far Rockaway. DMX or Tupac? DMX. Murder huh? or G-Unit? G-Unit. Rock Hold on. Murder, Murder Inc. had hits, though. Don't get it fucked up. They were a great label, bro. That's the thing. I'm not, I'm, I'm not on no dick eating shit like, oh, the battle and he destroyed. No, they were a great fucking label, bro. And they made hits. Ja Rule catalog is crazy. I ain't gonna front. That's respectfully. Let's get to the next one. Rockefeller or Dipset? Rockefeller. Mace or Fab? Mace. About paper or Bucky? Bucky. Team Arliss or A Team? Team Arliss. Ooh, that was hard. Ooh, that was, yo, that's crazy. Team Arliss, I gotta go with Team Yo, that's crazy. Yo, Mikey T, yo, you a different type of sandwich, kid. This is different, man. All right, come on, let's go. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Hennessy or Doucet? Doucet. All right, all right. Shout out Jay Z. Good, yeah, good. Weed or lean? Weed, man. Come on, man. <laughs> I know. I like your question. You just do shit on purpose. You just throw it out there, booby trap. All right, let's go. Drill or trap? Trap. Trap about money. Drill about death and disrespect. Not with it. Pop smoke or stack bundles? Stack. Max B or Ja Rule? Max B. Styles P, Gangster and a Gentleman album, or Sheik Looch, Walk With Me album? You are fucking dirty for that. You are dirty for that, bro. Both. They were both influential to me. I can't, I can't, I can't do that. They, they were both powerhouses to me in the time of my life. I didn't even know them at the time, bro. I used to listen to that shit every fucking day, bro. Yes, both. I can't, I can't. Both, man. Tony Yeo or Lloyd Banks? Banks, Banks. Well, Santana or Jim Jones? Jim Jones. Dave East or Millie's? Dave East. Million dollars worth the game or my expert opinion? I'll tell you what. I don't watch none of it. So I can't say. Cassidy or easy to block, Captain? Cassidy, you crazy? Cassidy's a legend, man. Niggas keep thinking because he look young still, like he fucking 19 or something. Like, that. Nah, that's the God. Like, he's responsible for a lot of niggas' rap styles. Like, he was a whole wave. He made niggas rap like him and he wasn't even from the city. Dude, that's a whole nother conversation. Salute to Cassidy, man. Fuck out of here. And I never listened to Cassidy music. I used to be a Cassidy hater, I ain't gonna front. Everybody loved him so much. I'm like, what the fuck y'all love about him? But I'd sit back and like, this nigga's really influential, bro. Like, it's crazy. You get what I'm saying? So it's always love. Cassidy's a different type of sandwich. Gucci Man or Young Jeezy? Who won the verses? I didn't really watch it. I just watched the clips. Now, some street shit. If we talking business and money, I'm going with Jeezy. If we going disrespectful, just Gives a fuck, reckless. I need the hood to love me forever. I'm going with Gucci. But I'm going to say Jeezy. 
because the way he handled it was super gentleman like was straight business 